Hi guys, so this is my new MacBook M1 Air. So I haven't even set up my coding setup on this uh, new laptop. So I was going to do that. So I thought I will record it so that you guys can also watch it. So let's get started. So the first step is to get the compiler. Now I'm using Mac OS right now. So I'll be uh, using Brew to do, do this, the home view. Uh, if you're on Windows, just get the MinGW, just download MinGW and install it and you'll be done. And on Linux, it is already inbuilt. So let's get brew.sh. And here uh, it says that we have to copy this command. So I think we can directly copy it like this. And uh, now let's go to the terminal. And in the terminal, let's just paste this command. And run. Okay. Put in the sudo password. And... Right, so it took around three to four minutes to get this done and but now we have the home view on our system but it is not uh, in our path currently so we have to copy some commands yeah so this is the command that we have to copy and add it to our terminal okay i think now we can use brew okay we have to close it once and open it again Right, so now we can use brew, right, and uh, now we want the GCC or the GNU compiler collection. So brew install GCC. Okay, so now we have the GCC. We can check it by typing GCC eleven G plus plus eleven. Yeah, so we have the G plus plus eleven. That is the eleventh version of the G plus plus compiler that we will be using. Okay, so now once you've done that, you can check if you have the G plus plus eleven by writing g++11 version and you can see that this is installed by homebrew but if you just write g++ version you will actually see the clang version and we don't want that so what we can do is we can just uh, do cd opt homebrew bin like this and once we're in here, just write this command ln s g plus plus 11 g plus plus. So it will override that. So after that, when you close and reopen the terminal, and if you write g plus plus version, you will see the homebrew version. So now the compiler is finally set up. And if you wanted to do that on Windows, you can just install mingw, minimalistic gnu for Windows. And that would do the same thing for you so yeah uh, move, let's move on to the next step all right so we have the compiler now we want the sublime text so we can just google sublime text 3 okay and we want to download the sublime text 3 uh, i'm not downloading sublime text 4 because the packages uh, that i'm going to use are not compatible with sublime text 4 right now so that's why i'm going to download the uh, sublime text 3 and for this, uh, uh, I'm, I'm downloading it for OS X. You can download it for Windows or Linux, uh, depending upon whatever you have. Right, so once it is installed, let's just uh, use it. Okay. So now I have the Sublime Text. It should be here. Right. So I have the Sublime Text 3 now and uh, it says whether you want to download the new version so i will just do cancel because i don't want sublime text 4 and in this uh, i can just make a file so i like to make it on my desktop i always name it yo.cpp and so i have a file named yo.cpp but i cannot compile it yet so i use a package called the fast olympic coding so for that i will just type command shift p and it shows me this option and i will install package control so once i install package control it will take some time you can see the progress here somewhere and yeah so it is installed now mainly because my internet is fast so um yeah so now again you just have to press control shift p and uh, type install package choose this option and then it will list all the packages that are available you can try some of these but the one that we want is called cpp fast olympic coding cpp fast olympic coding 
and uh, again you will see the progress here as it is installing okay so now when you have written that code just press control plus b and it's control alt b for uh, for the uh, for windows and on mac it is just control b and after that it will run like this and uh, you can press uh, control plus enter to make new test cases like this and uh, like this right so you get multiple test cases like this and if you change your code a little bit let's say instead of n plus 2 i do n plus 10 so if i press control b again it will run all of the test cases like this and i can even accept some of these say that okay this is the output that i was expecting so when i run it again um if the answer is correct it doesn't show me that uh, test case it just shows me green which means that it was correct so it doesn't show me anything else and it gives you some additional functionality like let's say if i want to use something like a, a vector of uh, integers so instead of writing vector int i can just write vi and it gives me the option to expand it to vector int and i can do it for any level of uh, nestedness so like I, if i want a vector of pair of set int comma pair of int string uh, i can do that so although you should never use such a complex structure but yeah uh, you can do that using the fast olympic coding extension now there's one setting that i like to add to the sublime text uh, uh, i go to the preferences and uh, so i want to copy this one i will paste it somewhere here and instead of making it uh, true i will make it false okay and i can just close this right so what this does is uh, if you leave a lot of lines it won't it will like keep this indentation uh, otherwise it just uh, uh, trims it to nothing but uh, there's one more thing that i like to do so i go to the tools and go to the developer option and you have new snippet so here you can make a snippet so basically let's make a make let's make an easy snippet so i'll just go with the template so i usually like to have a constant integer called n in the snippet so sometimes it is like uh, this is a constraint given from the problem sometimes it is like 10 to power 5 sometimes it is 10 to power 7 or something so let's just say it is 0 for now and i'll change it whenever i make the program so right so i'll copy this thing and i'll waste it here in a minute you'll understand what i'm trying to do here so instead of the 0 i can just write it like dollar 1 colon 0 so this 0 is the default value of that and then I have this dollar $2 here and I want a tab trigger so let's call it the template okay so this is my tab trigger and I'll save it so you should save it as template dot sublime settings I mean you can save it as any name but uh, sublime settings is uh, sublime snippet is necessary so you have to have the extension sublime hyphen snippet and you can save it then so once you save it uh, you can go back here you can erase everything but uh, whenever you write template and press enter it will bring your entire template and uh, it will have this zero selected so you can put in any other value like this and when you press tab it takes you to the uh, to the next uh, to the next place in the template so something like uh, let's show it again so let's say if i want 25 plus 5 and if I press tab, it brings me here. So in this way, you can have dollar uh, three, dollar four, dollar five, everything, and you can have default values like this for whichever template you want. So that's it for this video, and thank you for watching.